Howdy folks, welcome back to my channel. I got a fun project today. I'm going to attempt to build a didgeridoo out of PVC pipe, things you can buy in the hardware store. Uh, I, saw, I saw a video just came up in my feed on YouTube or whatever of somebody playing a didgeridoo and I kind of watched it. I was like, wow, that's neat. And I was like, hmm, I wonder what, a, what an inexpensive didgeridoo costs. And I went out there and I kind of searched and you can find them for as low as like $30, um, professionally made ones, 30, 40, $50. And so then I started reading reviews on them and people that actually understood this were saying that like some of those didn't have that great of a sound and that you could make one out of PVC for a fraction of that cost that would probably sound just as good. So then I was like, hmm. So I started searching for DIY didgeridoos. Tons of information out there, guys, but to be honest, none of the videos were complete. Like this was like, oh yeah, that was a great tutorial on how to do this, but you didn't tell me how to tune it. Or this one, you, you really spent time on tuning, but you only told me how to tune it to a C sharp or whatever, right? Like I felt like all the videos were lacking something. So that's why I'm making this video because I want it to just be a DIY PVC didgeridoo all in one. Um, so that's the genesis of this, but let's get started by taking a look at what you need to do this. The first thing you need is a piece of PVC pipe. And this particular pipe here, I'm not sure if this is gonna show up on the camera, but this is one and a half inch PVC. Now one note that I should say is the one and a half inch means it's one and a half on the inside diameter. So it's larger than one and a half here. It's closer to two inches out here, but it's one and a half here. Now I chose that one because I did, again, some research. I don't know anything about this, but I did a little bit of research and found out that that seems to be a good starter diameter. You could use a two inch pipe like this. This is a piece of two inch pipe. So if you can see that it is a little bit larger. This is just a scrap I had laying around. Um, if you own a house, you may have all the parts you need on hand because it seems like you're always going through PVC. And uh, this is a piece of one and a quarter. So again, you can see that it is a little bit smaller. Now, all of these will work. There is no, no set reason of whether you should use two inch pipe or one and a quarter or one and a half. Like I said, I did some reading and people that know more about it than me said the one and a half is a good diameter to start with because it has a good combination of volume and ease to play. Um, but they said like one and a quarter, one and a half, two, they're all gonna work. Uh, so, you know, if you already have a piece of one and a quarter or a piece of two inch on hand, I wouldn't necessarily wanna go out and buy something new. Now you can buy this piece of five foot, this is a five foot piece of one and a half inch PVC. And uh, hold on here, I wrote it down over here. This was $3.61 at Lowe's, um, at least in my area, at least at the time that I'm making this video. So about three and a half dollars for this. So the next thing you need is a mouthpiece. And I went with this. Now there, uh, you know, as I watch all these different videos, everybody seems to use different things for mouthpieces, but this is the one that I chose. And this one actually comes with the little nut, which I probably won't end up using, but here is the actual piece. Let me show you this. So you can see it's got a threaded end and then it has the regular end that goes on the PVC. And this is called, hold on, I wrote it down over here. This is called a one and a half to one and a quarter inch trap adapter. This is, this was a dollar and 18 cents at Lowe's with the little nuts. Sometimes they sell them without the nut and they're a little bit cheaper, but so you know, you got about a buck here. Um, but you need something to use as a mouthpiece. What this is gonna do is take the diameter of the pipe and make it more suited to your mouth. So this is a good one, or at least it feels good to me. And uh, again, from the information, this it seems like the one and a quarter inch interior diameter here is, is, is a pretty good size. So that's what I'm going with for my mouthpiece. The next thing that you need is your bell. So at the end of the didgeridoo, they typically bell outward. Now, some people I have heard have chosen to, well, they'll heat up the end of the PVC here with, um, so like here, they'll heat this up with a heat gun and then take a wine bottle and push it in there just real slowly and then heat it up some more and push it and it'll naturally make it bell out. And that's one way to do it. Um, but uh, that sounds like a lot of work to me. <laughs> so I just went with one of these. And this is just a one and a half to two inch reducer or enlarger, depending on which way you're looking at it. But um, they sell these at any hardware store as well. I got this one at Lowe's and this one was $1.68. So that's basically all you need to make the didgeridoo. So if you take the mouthpiece that I bought, the bell that I bought, and the piece of five foot PVC back here that we're going to cut down, you put all that together, that's $6.47. This is a sub $7 instrument.
Okay, so I have some notes here based on the research that I did, and there is a simple formula to figure out the resonant frequency of sound traveling through a tube or a piece of pipe in this case. And the, the formula is the length of the tube equals the speed of sound divided by the frequency times four. Okay, if that sounds like jargon, jargon to you, let me make that make a little more sense. So first of all, it's a metric formula, so we need all of this in metric. And so the speed of sound at 20 degrees Celsius, which is, if you're not familiar, that's 68 degrees Fahrenheit, um, but the speed of sound is 344 meters per second. So we would take 344 and we would divide that by our resonant frequency times four. Now, what's the resonant frequency of a didgeridoo? Well, it varies. They can be tuned in basically any note you want, but the most popular keys are between B1 and F2. So B, C, D, E, and F, and of course there's a C sharp and an E flat in there too if you're curious about that. But so let's just take the C2 because that's an easy one to work with. So a C2 is tuned to 65.4 hertz if you're on the 440 hertz uh, scale, which is the standard Western music scale. So 65.4 hertz. Take that times four and you get 261.63. So now let's do our formula. 344 divided by 261.63 is going to equal 1.315 meters or 132 centimeters or 51 and three quarter inches. So your didgeridoo, if you want it tuned to a C2, needs to be 51 and three quarter inches long from the end of the bell to the tip of the mouthpiece. The whole thing needs to be that length. Okay, so let's go over all the keys real quick just so you have those numbers. So if you want your didgeridoo tuned to a B1, you would want to use 54 and three quarter inches. That's 139 centimeters if you're um, outside of the US. For the C2, as I just mentioned, 51 and three quarter inches or 132 centimeters. For a D2, you would want 46 inches or 117 centimeters. For an E2, you would want 41 inches or 104 centimeters, and for an F2, you would want 38 and three quarter inches or 99 centimeters if you uh, are dealing with metric. Okay, I'm out here in the workshop, and the first thing you wanna do is prepare your parts. And what I mean by that, I'm using my little Dremel here with the sanding barrel, and you want, a lot of times with these, since they are manufactured, they'll have sharp edges. So for instance, this one had a really sharp edge right here. And since you're gonna put that against your mouth, you don't want that to be sharp. So I just took the Dremel and kind of filed it off. Additionally, around this edge where the shoulder is here, on just like one side, it was really sharp right there. So I just kind of took it off. And I just went around the whole thing to be sure. And then on this one, it had like a little bit of an edge here use this tool and just kind of went around the outside a little bit. So make sure you do that first, prepare any parts, get rid of any sharp edges, anything like that. And then you're good to go. Now, if you don't have a Dremel like this, you can do this with like an X-Acto knife or even a piece of sandpaper. It's not really hard to do, but uh, the Dremel works really nice. It makes very short work of it. So now the next thing we're gonna do is uh, we're gonna put the bell on. So I'm gonna set this down. I'm gonna grab this and my bell. And this is what I'm basically gonna to wanna to do is I'm gonna to wanna to put this bell on this end. But first, I'm gonna grab some of my PVC cement, which I have right here. And guys, if you like own a home and you've ever had to do any plumbing repairs, you probably, I'm just gonna knock that over. You probably have this stuff on hand and you've probably used it before, so I'm probably not telling you anything. But what you do is this stuff here, you go ahead and open it. Sometimes it is, ugh, there we go. Sometimes it sticks from the last time like that and just kind of coat it around the inside like that. Hopefully you can see that on the camera. I know it's dripping, so I'm gonna put that over there. And then you grab your pipe and then you just push that on. Now, at that point, I'm gonna drip on my finger, sorry. At that point, it's essentially done. But what I always like to do with these is turn it over and just kind of push it against the ground to make sure you've got a good tight seal maybe turn it a couple times and just push it. So remember, this is our mouthpiece and we're gonna put our mouthpiece on. And then this particular one, I'm gonna go ahead and tune it to a C. So let me reference my notes here. I think that was 51 and three quarters. Isn't that what I said earlier? Yes, 51 and three quarters is what I want. So I want this from here to the ground to be 51 and three quarters. So let me grab my tape measure. So the current length to the top of the mouthpiece, I'm not sure if you guys can see this, but it's about 63 inches, or it's 63 on the dot, actually, inches to the top of the mouthpiece. So much too long. However, 
I have to figure out how much does this mouthpiece take up. So what I want to do, so I know it's 63 and that's pretty good seat. So now I'll go ahead and take this off. So without the mouthpiece, it's 61 and 7 eighths. So that's going to tell us that our mouthpiece is about one and an eighth. Our mouthpiece adds about one and an eighth inch to the whole thing. Okay, so we know we need to take an inch and an eighth off. And if we consult my notes here, we're saying 51 and three quarters is what we want. So if we take an inch, an inch and an eighth off, that's 50 and five eighths. So we're gonna wanna cut this to 50 and five eighths. Okay, so I've made a mark right there at 50 and five eighths. That's where I wanna cut. And you can cut PVC pipe with an ordinary hacksaw like this. These are available for usually less than $10 at any hardware store, or you probably have one. Um, but you can cut it with something like that. There's also PVC pipe cutters that you can buy that are specifically designed to cut this and they cut a nice perfect edge every time, but those are fairly expensive. So if you're not gonna do a lot of PVC cutting, probably not a good investment, probably better to use a hacksaw, but let's go ahead and cut this and then we'll get the mouthpiece on. Okay, so there we go. I have cut it off and I've got my mouthpiece and let's put that on there, push it in place and now let's measure it. Here's the moment of truth. So put the tape measure down here at the bottom. Remember, we're looking for 51 and three quarters. And we are, oh my God. We are 51 and three quarters on the nose, guys. Woo, that's crazy. Perfect, okay. So I'm gonna go ahead and cement this in place and we should be good to go. So there we go. For all intents and purposes now, we are done with our didgeridoo. This is a didgeridoo and C and I can start playing it. But the next couple steps are optional steps. But again, going through the research that I found guys, um, it seems that if your didgeridoo is too perfect, like this one is right now, because this pipe is perfectly round, that um, they tend to sound a little bit sterile. And what makes the real didgeridoos, which are made of wood, uh, so unique and makes them sound so good is because wood is not perfect. Like, you know, when you hollow it out, especially because typically they, or traditionally they were hollowed out by termites and then, you know, they would finish it off with, you know, hand, hand tools and such. And it's never going to be perfect. And so that inconsistent uh, surface is what gives you a lot of the cool sound of the didgeridoo, supposedly. Um, so again, I know nothing about this. I'm going by what I've read. But so a lot of people recommend that you heat it up with a heat gun and maybe put a couple little twists or tweaks in there. Or some people say to take something, you know, like maybe a, the back of a screwdriver or something like this and maybe, you know, heat it up and just kind of push in in a couple spots to uh, give it some, some uniqueness just so it's not quite so, so um, perfect. Okay, so I have taken my heat gun here and clamped it in the vise just to, so it holds itself. And I'm going to attempt to heat up a couple sections here and sort of see if I can bend it a little bit. So let's see how this goes, guys. You can just see there, I just put a little bit of a bend in there. That's all I was looking to do. And then I'm gonna hold it here for a minute or so till it hardens. And so now that it's cooled, you can probably just kind of see it's just got a couple of subtle bends in it, which I really like because it kind of makes it feel almost like a branch. Um, this really looks good. I'm pretty pleased with it. Now you can probably notice there's a couple of little burn marks where I got it just a little too hot. So be careful of that. Now I am gonna decorate it. That's the next step. So remember I said it's kind of a five-step process. You find your pipe, you find your mouthpiece, you find your bell, and then you do something to make it a little bit imperfect. And finally, you decorate it. That's the next step. Let's go ahead and decorate this thing. Make it look cool. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and spray paint this baby. So I got the first coat on there of yellow. You can just kind of see that. And uh, you might notice that some of the barcodes still show through. That's okay, because this is just the first coat. But I just took a couple sawhorses. I put those little clamps on there so the wind didn't blow it. And by the way, I'd mentioned earlier that it was a little chilly. It's about 50 degrees today, which is about as cold as you want to uh, spray paint outdoors. Um, but there is a trick if you don't know it. Take your spray cans and, so, and put, fill up a, a bucket of water 
with um, like 90 degree water or 100 degree water and set the spray can in the water for a couple minutes before you shoot it and that will um, help it uh, adhere a lot better. So anyway, uh, here's the first coat, let's let her dry. So I moved it over into the sun to get a little better, uh, you know, warmth on it. And you can see I'm kind of doing a fade here from yellow to orange coming out pretty nicely and then next I'll lay down a little red down here towards the tip and it'll be like a red to orange to yellow fade. Okay and there we have it there's our third color I put some red on there hopefully you can see that so it's got a little fade as you go down from red to orange to yellow that's what I was looking for and um, I'm probably guys I don't, you can probably tell from the lighting that the the uh, sun's getting kind of low so I will probably have to let this dry overnight and uh, finish up the video tomorrow, but it's looking pretty darn cool. Okay, it's the next morning. The paint has dried and here she is. And I'm very pleased with the way this came out. Now I did one little other aesthetic touch. If you look here, you can see these three green bands around it. And what I did is I used some marking tape, vinyl marking tape, which I have some here. Um, you know, you can get this in any hardware store. It looks like electrical tape, but it's colored. And what I use that for, I always keep that around because I use it for like on my cables. And so I always have some of that on hand. And I just wrapped um, a few pieces of the green right up here. And then on the bottom here, I wrapped a couple pieces of the yellow. And uh, it actually looks pretty nice. Let me scoot back here so you can see the whole thing. There you go. It actually came out looking really nice. I am extremely pleased with the aesthetic. I love the way the bends kind of went. And you can see what I did. I kind of painted the red and about where this first bend is, I did the fade to the orange. And about where the second bend is, I did the fade to the yellow. So it just kind of, you know, it kind of has a cool aesthetic to it. So I'm very pleased with the way it looks, guys. I guess the next step is to see what it sounds like. Okay, so I have never played a didgeridoo before. Uh, I am a complete beginner and I watched a couple videos on YouTube and uh, I guess we're gonna try it here. But guys, I'm just gonna say in advance, I expect this to go horribly because I've never tried, if one to understand, it's not an easy instrument to get the hang of, but let's give it a shot. <laughs> I'm not sure how long I want to sit here and have you guys watch me embarrass myself, but you can see that I'm starting to get the technique. It's probably going to take me a little while. They say it takes years to become a really good uh, didgeridoo player, but um, you know, there's some basic technique to it. So maybe I'll do a follow-up video when I'm a better player, but hey, I'm getting started. So folks, if you like what I do on this channel, why don't you go ahead and hit that subscribe button below. This channel is all about musical miscellany, be that a didgeridoo that you build in the garage or, you know, an electric guitar or a banjo or whatever. I just, uh, if you can make music with it, I probably want to try it. I'll see you in the next episode. So as you can tell, the didgeridoo is not necessarily an intuitive instrument to play. It takes a little practice. Um, just over the past couple days, I've kept it by my desk here, and every time I've got 10, 15 minutes, I just kind of pick it up and mess with it for a bit. So have fun, make yourself a didgeridoo, and learn to play it.